Tonight, the powerful snowstorm and Arctic cold slamming parts of the U.S. as millions head home from the Thanksgiving holiday. The lake effect snow stretching from the Midwest to the Northeast. A state of emergency in New York State up to six feet expected. Plus, the cold plunge set to impact more than 200 million Americans. Danger on the road of 15 car pileup in Michigan. And the biggest travel crush is yet to come. The TSA bracing for what may be its busiest day ever. Your full forecast ahead. Also tonight, the dash for deals on this Black Friday. Americans expected to spend more than ever this weekend. But how do the savings stack up? At a global strike at Amazon, will it impact when your holiday gifts arrive? The missing camper found alive after seven weeks in the Northern Rockies, how he survived the wilderness and blistering cold. More than five years after it was nearly destroyed by fire, your first look inside the beautifully restored Notre Dame Cathedral. Two food safety recalls over potential salmonella contamination. And the blockbuster battle, Moana 2 breaking records on the heels of Wicked's huge opening as the box office rolls towards its biggest Thanksgiving weekend in years. And our traditional kickoff to the holiday season with the spectacular Radio City Rockettes. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening, I'm Peter Alexander in for Lester with Thanksgiving now in the rearview mirror and tens of millions of Americans eyeing their return trips home. That mega storm we've been warning about is now lashing the Great Lakes. More than two feet of snow already in places and much more expected. Tonight, the punishing conditions are snarling road traffic and delaying thousands of flights from Chicago to Detroit, and they are likely to stick around through the record-breaking travel weekend. Even if the snow misses you, the frigid cold likely won't. More than 200 million people are expected to get hit with below freezing temperatures in the week ahead. More on that forecast in just a moment. But we begin tonight with NBC's Tom Costello. In Erie, PA, it's piling up fast. Lake effect snow from cold Canadian air moving across Lake Erie. Blinding snow trapped drivers. Downed power lines, no flights in or out. Cars at a standstill at the New York, Pennsylvania state line. And police say weather contributed to a 15 car pileup with injuries near Grand Rapids, Michigan late Thursday. Tonight, NBC's George Solis is in Buffalo. New York's governor has declared a state of emergency for communities along Lakes Ontario and Erie because of that massive snowstorm. Some areas just like this one bracing for up to six feet of snow. The system comes before heavy Thanksgiving return traffic is expected on Sunday. At airports today, 2,000 plus flight delays after the FAA says it handled a record number of flights Sunday through Thanksgiving. I've heard about the weather, um, but it seems like we're getting out uh, ahead of anything that might be a problem. American Captain Phil Spazieri pulling a 737 into JFK. We have lots of 7-3s are running all the time and uh, Airbus and multiple different fleets and they need to be up to speed at all times. So in addition to safety, it's just to keep this airline going. The brunt of the weather will be uh, coming in next hour and lasting through the morning hours. United's meteorologists on full storm watch with airport de-icing operations certain to expand over the coming days. How far in advance of a weather event do you decide to delay or cancel a flight? Well, we want to have the best information available, so we'll try to make that decision as close to flight time as possible. Meanwhile, after heavy snow in Colorado, a warning of the risk of avalanches large enough to injure or kill you. All of it foreshadowing a potentially dangerous weekend ahead. And Tom, Sunday and Monday still expected to be the busiest travel days? Yeah, that's right. The TSA expecting 3 million passengers moving through checkpoints on Sunday. That could be an all-time record breaker. We'll see. You know, last week we had the FAA saying that only 1.2% of flights were delayed. This last week, we'll see if that holds up on the return trip when all the airports will be packed. Peter? Tom Costello hunkered down at his perch there in Washington, D.C. Tom, thank you so much. We are closely tracking that lake effect snow and bitter cold. Angie Lastman is with us now. Angie, what are you watching tonight? Worsening conditions, Peter, over the next couple of days. Getting into the weekend, you can see those snow bands have set up right downwind of the lake. Seven million people right now under these winter alerts. Those expected to last through the weekend as we gear up for more of this snow in some of those same areas. Whiteout travel conditions through the rest of the evening, especially I-90 and I-86 corridors. Those are going to set us up for more of that 
that snow here as we get into tomorrow. Some of the heaviest bands could contain thunder snow. And again, the visibility will be decreased through the weekend. Here's the snowfall totals up to 70 inches in some spots. This is going to be four to five feet of snow by the time this is all said and done. And on top of that, chilly conditions, Arctic air settling in for much of the country. Peter. Angie, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And while Thanksgiving is over, the season of savings has just begun. The long holiday weekend is already breaking records. And our Brian Chung hit the stores to see how this year's deals are stacking up. This Black Friday, millions headed to the mall and in a throwback, even lining up. Kicking off a Black Friday weekend that's expected to break records. Over the holiday season, shoppers are expected to spend almost a trillion dollars. And early indicators show strong spending as shoppers spent over six billion dollars online yesterday on Thanksgiving, a new record. We were one of the first here, persons here actually. In person, it just feels like that nostalgic. I want to get out the house too. I need to touch grass. It points to a resilient American consumer. But shoppers are a little choosier these days. We've been shopping together for since 2004, I think. Like Ariella Schaffron and Arlie Klein, who are regulars at Westfield Garden State Plaza. When we met them mid-trip, they said 50% off would get them to the register. If the deal is right. Yeah. That's yeah. our motto, I think, homework. right? That's your motto. <laughs> if the deal, deal is right. right. <laughs> but when we followed up. There was no door busters, uh, you know, just the regular 40% off. You can find that online. Other shoppers, even empty handed. Already. Yes. You've been here for how long already? I want to say two hours. Two hours, and you don't have any bags so far. No, I'm Why? nothing. Because the sales have just been like bad. Shoppers are also clicking and tapping their way to deals. Amazon broke records in its Black Friday and Cyber Monday weekend last year, despite a make Amazon pay strike that organizers plan to bring back again this year. But initial numbers for this shopping weekend pointing to an economy getting a holiday boost. Thanks to the American consumer. And Brian, what are the experts' best tips for shoppers heading into this weekend and Cyber Monday? Yeah, well, the prices are likely to be best for TVs today, but those that can wait for a few days might see even deeper discounts on things like apparel and also electronics on Cyber Monday. And experts tell us as far as tips, try to take advantage of price matching from stores that offer it, as well as use price checking tools online to truly make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck. Peter. Still a packed house there this evening. Brian Chung, thank you. Now to an incredible story of survival. A camper of survival. A camper found alive in the northern Rockies after seven weeks. Stephanie Gosk shares how he endured the wilderness and plummeting temperatures to find his way back. Sam Bonastic flashing thumbs up in a British Columbia hospital. It is nothing short of miraculous that he ended up there. According to the police, the 20-year-old left on a solo hiking trip in early October. His destination, Redfern Kiley Provincial Park, deep within the Canadian Rockies. This time of year, the weather is unpredictable and temperatures often plummet below zero. How difficult is it to survive this time of year in that kind of place? Well, if you don't know how, it would be extremely difficult. The wild terrain home to dangerous predators, black bears, grizzlies, and wolves. Large packs of wolves with well over 100 wolves in, in the packs, and they are very active hunters in that area. Benastic was supposed to return October 17th, but he did not. Instead, the outdoor enthusiast found himself in his own version of the popular show, Alone. Bone chilling cold. Winter's coming. This land is as wild as any in North America. Survivalists are left by themselves in the wilderness to brave the elements and the animals. Grizzly bears. <laughs> Mountain lion. Some seasons set in Western Canada. Bonastic really was alone. Fortunately, Sam had experience in hiking and being in that kind of environment, so he was able to survive. And then he moved into a valley where he built a, a nether camp and a shelter in a dried out creek bed. Eventually wandering out of the woods on a desolate forestry road seven weeks later. The police say he was treated for smoke inhalation and frostbite, eventually reunited with his family. Here they are at the Buffalo Inn, where guests are invited to enjoy the beautiful snowy world of British Columbia from indoors. Stephanie Gosk, NBC News. Overseas, one of the world's most famous landmarks, the newly restored Notre Dame Cathedral, is set to officially reopen next week in Paris, more than five years after a devastating fire. Tonight, Keir Simmons has our first look inside. Even more beautiful than before is President Macron's description tonight 
leading the world's cameras through the doors of Notre Dame for the first time since its restoration. And it is stunning. Gleaming white walls, newly bright colors from stained glass windows to now vivid murals. They've created a modern altar for this medieval cathedral and a gold setting for the crown of thorns. A transformation from the devastation wrought by the inferno just five years ago. Macron today admiring the roof's new oak beams, this time fitted with fire doors and sprinklers. Outside, with restoration remaining, there's still scaffolding. Truly, this was a race against time. NBC News has had exclusive access throughout the mammoth undertaking, inside the cathedral and 300 feet above it. So this is the spire that went crashing down. Exactly. We all watched it all yeah. around the world. 2,000 craftsmen and women, helped by millions of donated dollars, including from the US, used medieval techniques just like the cathedral's original construction workers. Sometimes we ask, how did they do? <laughs> how did they do it? Yeah, they didn't have the techniques we have. They didn't have the technology, the, the scaffold. So that's hard. Paris and the cathedral. Today, Macron thanked the people behind this history-making undertaking, telling them you've healed the nation's wound, calling it the project of the century. Keir Simmons, NBC News, Paris. Spectacular once again. And back here in the U.S., some of Hollywood's biggest movies served up a Thanksgiving feast with Disney's Moana 2 racking up $28 million during its Turkey Day release. That's a new record. Chloe Malas is keeping tabs tonight. Chloe, this is all good news for the box office. Oh, it is great news. And, Peter, I have been looking at the numbers all day, and there is a clear winner here. It's Moana 2. It is far exceeding expectations. It had the biggest Thanksgiving day ever. This was a record previously held by Frozen 2. And by Sunday, at the end of the weekend, it will have raked in potentially over $175 million at the domestic box office. But let's take a second, though, to talk about Gladiator 2 and Wicked. So those opened last week, but people are still going to see those movies this week. And if you combine their success with Moana 2, you're potentially going to see the biggest Thanksgiving holiday weekend in box office history. So what does this mean, right? And we both have kids, and we've been going to the movie theater over the past couple days, right? We've talked about that. It means families are willing to spend the money and get out of the house to have that classic movie-going experience. Yeah, nice way to warm up during the cold holiday season. Chloe, nice to see you. See Happy you holidays to you. And 60 seconds right here, cracking the case. We're going to take you inside a new Native American forensics lab that is already solving cold cases and helping families heal. We are back now with a new push to solve cold cases in the Mountain West. A group of Native American scientists recently launched a forensics team dedicated to solving cases about missing indigenous women. And as Morgan Radford reports tonight, their state-of-the-art techniques are already helping families there get closure. Growing up here on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation in northwest Montana, Haley Omiso watched for years as community members went missing. Their case kind of fell through the cracks of the justice system. So she decided to take matters into her own hands, starting the first indigenous-led forensics team in the nation, called Okami Forensics. Using the latest in forensic technology in the lab at the University of Montana. Basically, we'll be putting our DNA samples into this. And combing for clues with her team in the field to help families with missing loved ones find closure. If you weren't doing this now, would anyone else be doing it? I don't think so. We just have so many cases that are unsolved. Cases like Aaron Pepion's, who we first met back in 2021. This is where police believe Arden went in the river? Yes. Today, he's still searching. What we're looking for today is evidence to see if there's any bones or, you know, something that we may have missed. Have you ever thought about giving up? No, not ever. His daughter, three-year-old Arden Pepion, went missing in April of 2021 while she was under the care of an uncle who said she disappeared while he was practicing shooting near this river. He later pleaded guilty to negligent endangerment. I know that if I see her or if there's something there and they find her, I'm not leaving because she's been there for that long alone. Arden is one of more than 4,000 cases of missing or murdered Native Americans that have gone unsolved. Which is why Omiso says this is just the first of many searches she and her team plan to do, all no cost to the family. Haley's indigenous mm -hmm. and she's from here. 
Yes. Does that right. make a difference for you in having someone like her handle this case? A little bit. I'm just glad that we have natives that are out there that are doing this kind of stuff. And I'm proud of them. Does this case have special significance for you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I have an eight-year-old and a three-year-old. Um, so when I first came out to search for Arden, it hit me pretty hard after that. Um, going home and just being able to hug my son. <laughs> um, and knowing that Aaron can do that. When you're searching your own land and being around people that you know, it's harder. For These sure. are people. Yeah. We're natives. We're here. And we're go always going to be here. Morgan Radford, Blackfeet Indian Reservation, NBC News. Still ahead here tonight, two new food recalls to warn you about, including one that is impacting more than half the country. Plus, we'll show you the surprising new movement to protect crops that's already bringing beauty. We are back now with a consumer alert about two major food recalls. Sun-fed produce is recalling whole cucumbers over the risk of salmonella. The cucumbers were shipped to more than half of all states between October and November. Plus, organic eggs from Costco are also being recalled over salmonella concerns. Those eggs are from Costco's Kirkland Signature brand, specifically the 24-count cartons sold in more than two dozen Costco stores in Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Now to our Climate Challenge series and a sustainable trend started by Iowa farmers that's being embraced in 14 other states. The effort is already helping all of us, and as Ann Thompson shows us tonight, the impact is beautiful. In Iowa's fertile fields, surprising bursts of color, prairie flowers and grasses, deliberately grown in what are called prairie strips. It's therapeutic. Paul Muggy put one in his wheat field. This is what Iowa used to look like. Yeah, all of Iowa. And there's less than 1% of the land that's left in prairie. 20 years ago, Iowa State's Lisa Schulte Moore started planting this idea with farmers to improve the land. Farmers thought, you know, that's an interesting idea, but um, no thank you. <laughs> How hard was it to convince them to do this? What we had to do to begin to convince them is show them the data. Her data shows converting 10% of a field to prairie strips can reduce soil erosion by 95% and fertilizer runoff as much as 90%. The real power in all this beauty lies in what you can't see underground in the complex root system of the prairie. The roots stabilize the soil and keep fertilizers from going into streams, which flow into the Mississippi River and eventually pollute the Gulf of Mexico. So if you want Gulf shrimp, you want prairie strips. <laughs> Great for farmer Nathan Anderson, it, it is paying so off. We're entrusted with this land for a short period of time. It's our opportunity to care for that, and it's our opportunity to care for the communities that are downstream from us as well. An organic farmer, Muggy, says the strips attract the insects that protect his crops. And that's not all. I have had high school kids want to come and take their senior pictures in my strips just because they're pretty. My neighbors appreciate what I'm, what I'm trying to do, I think. And it's rewarding. For the people and the land. Ann Thompson, NBC News, Cherokee, Iowa. Such a pretty part of the plains. And when we come back here, we're going to introduce you to this year's Radio City Rockettes, including the special bond that keeps these dancers in sync. Finally, there is good news tonight about a holiday tradition right here at Rockefeller Center, the Radio City Rockettes. And as Joe Fryer shows us, this year's class is keeping it in the family. unison could easily be defined by images of the Radio City Rockettes, especially Courtney and Caitlin Sullivan, who are really in sync. We get every day, are you two twins? And we're like, yes. Now in their second season, they remember watching the Rockettes as kids. As an identical twin, we do everything at the same time. We walk the same, we talk the same. So like to see a line of ladies dancing as one, we were like, wow, that feels like it could be us. It felt like the perfect job for you? <laughs> yes, I felt like we were born to do this. Carmen Moore also had that dream. She would watch the Rockettes every Thanksgiving, captivated by the entire group, but galvanized by one particular dancer, Danelle Morgan, 
That was my inspiration, seeing another black woman who is 100% authentically herself. You're not just following in her footsteps, you're sharing the stage with her. Absolutely. What does that feel like? Crazy. I watched this woman for so many years and then to be able to share the beauty of holding this legacy together is, is amazing. When Megan Glazer was young, she didn't just watch the Rockettes, she performed with them as young Clara in the Nutcracker scene. During that time, she turned 12. The cast got me a birthday cake and I made it my birthday wish to become a Rocket. A wish come true. Megan is now in her 15th season. And like even sitting here, just like looking out into the theater, it's amazing. What is it about it, do you think? It's just, it's one of a kind. Radio City Music Hall, being a Rockhead, it's just one of a kind. It's legendary. So to all the Claras out there, you say? Never give up, dream big. And carrying on that legacy in unison. Joe Fryer, NBC News, New York. Still dazzling after all these years. That's Nightly News for this Friday. I'm Peter Alexander. For all of us here at NBC News, we thank you for watching and have a great night. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.